God bless you all for tuning in to Mount Zion Fresh International Ministry. I uh, thank God for uh, your lives, and uh, we want to appreciate you for being part of the ministry, uh, following our teachings online. Uh, good evening to everyone, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you from wherever you're watching from the globe. Uh, today, I'd like us to examine the scripture and to understand that without the scriptures, we can be made in Christ. Christ can be formed in us either. Shall we open tonight uh, to the scripture? Let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verses number 9. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verses number 9. I'm going to use the NIV to teach tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse number 9. Says, verse 9 says, verse 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for you. He said, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I'm teaching on this subject how to manifest the power of God. How to manifest the power of God. Shall we turn to Romans chapter number 1 verse 16? Romans chapter 1 verse number 16. Romans 1 16. Romans 1 16 says, Romans 1 16. Quickly, Romans 1 16. Let's see what Paul uh, says, or what Paul is saying, or what Christ is saying to us. He says, I am not ashamed of, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jews, then for the Gentiles. The power of God for the salvation of everyone. The power of God. The power of God. So now, how to manifest the power of God? That is the question tonight. Hallelujah. First, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that this year, 2024, in order for you to overtake, you must manifest in the power of God. It is the power of God that helps you to overtake. It is the power of God that helps you to pursue, to overtake, and to recover. And the same power can help you to pursue, to overtake, and to be established. The same power we are talking about. Hallelujah. Now, uh, before we get into the teaching, I'd like you to understand from the uh, fiscal point of view that in botany, that's plant biology, the germination process is never completed. A tree is never formed without planting the seed. A tree is never formed without the aspect, the process of planting. So a seed must be planted into the ground. Now, in the process of germination, before the roots shoot out from the seed, followed by the leaves, the seed coat must first of all break. The seed coat must break for the roots to shoot out, then the leaves to budge. Hallelujah. How is it related to our teaching tonight, Pastor? For you to manifest the power of God, you must be in Christ. For you to manifest the power of God, you must be a new creation. Sinners don't manifest the power of God, rather, the new creation. Hallelujah. It's all about the new creation. So, I would like you to understand that uh, you cannot manifest the power of God out of Christ. It's only in Christ. 
which suggests to me that you must have been to the cross. You must have encountered Christ Jesus at the cross. We can talk about manifesting the power of God without getting back to the place called the cross of Calvary. We cannot talk about manifesting in the prophetic, the power of God in the prophetic, without being at the cross. You must have been to the cross and accept the finished work of the cross of Calvary. You must be to the cross. You must have been to the cross by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the grace of God, and must accept the finished work of Calvary. Are we together? Because power was released at the cross. So how do I get the power to manifest? I must have been to the cross. Hallelujah. So the cross of Calvary is the peace center of the release of the power of God. Or the cross of Calvary is the peace center for me to manifest. Me who? Not by my no by power. But me who? A new creation. A new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. So again, we see that there must be a relationship with Christ to manifest the power of God. There must be a genuine relationship with Christ to manifest the power of God. You must be born again, not a churchgoer. Churchgoers don't manifest because to manifest the power of God, you must have his identity. And Christ is in us, is the identity of God in us, which gives us the authority to manifest the power of God. Christ in us gives us the ability, the enablement, the grace to manifest the power of God. Christ in us gives us the, 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 the right to manifest the power of God. So you must have a relationship with Christ Jesus. I didn't say church. Relationship with Christ Jesus is the key. Hallelujah. So, like, we go back to the example I used initially where the sick code need to break out before they shoot, the roots can shoot out. Before the leaves can budge out, the seed code needs to break. But first of all, the seed must be planted. So, you see, the body of Christ, Christ's body was, he died because of our sins. He bore our sins. And that on the cross of Calvary and offered himself. Better put, he took our sins upon himself and offered himself on the cross of Calvary. Paid the price for me. Paid the price for the born again. Paid our price. We owed the price. We could not pay. So we owed the debt. We could not pay. He came and bought us with a price. We owed the debt. Because we're born sinners, we could not pay. And Christ came and paid for us with his own blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. So he carried our sins on his body and died on the and offered himself on the cross of Calvary. So his body was destroyed in order to release the Holy Spirit, the power in action. So you must be plugged to the power source to manifest power. You must be plugged to a power source to manifest that power. If you are plugged to a 10, uh, 10 watt power source, you manifest 10 watt power. If you are plugged to a generator of 1000 watt, you manifest 1000 watt. You cannot be plugged into the power source of 10 watt. And you manifest a thousand watt power. It doesn't work that way. The power source you are plugged to determines the quality and the, 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 the determines the quantity, sorry, the quality of power you manifest. The type of power source you are connected to determines the type of power you will manifest. Hallelujah. So you can't play around. And manifest the power of God. It doesn't work that way. You must be in Christ. So you must be connected to the Holy Spirit to manifest the power of God. There must be a close relationship with the Holy Spirit. And if there's no Jesus Christ, there's no Holy Spirit. But when you have Christ in you, you have the Holy Spirit. Who is the Spirit of the living God. 
Now remember, like I said, Christ Jesus is the key, is the access code into the kingdom of God where there is power. And he expects a new creation to manifest the power of the kingdom of God because we carry the DNA of God the Father. Hallelujah. So I'd like you to understand that nothing can stop the power of the Holy Spirit when it's in action. So the Holy Spirit we see at uh, creation, initial Genesis chapter number 1, uh, verse number 2, He was there, and the Spirit of the Lord moved. And the Spirit of the Lord moved. He was there in creation. And when the Father said, when God Almighty said, let there be, the Holy Spirit manifested the Word, and there was light, let there be, and there was. So in this year 2024, for you to overtake, you need the power of God. I'd like you to understand in 1 Kings chapter number 18, verse 46, we see a scenario where Elijah told King Ahab to move to Israel, for it is about to rain. I hear the sound of abundant rain. But King Ahab moved to Israel. It's about to rain heavily. And the Bible said the king saddled on his donkey and moved towards Jezreel while Elijah was still behind. And all of a sudden, the Bible said the hand of the Lord came, took Elijah, talked him, took him, and Elijah overtook the king. Which means the person who was behind became the first, became ahead. And Elijah bypassed the king who began the journey. And the king was surprised to see Elijah ahead of him. But I left this man behind. How come he is in front of me now? For the last can be the first when power is in action. You might have been a nobody in 2023, but this year 2024, you can be somebody if you can be plugged to the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when you're plugged to the power source, you manifest the power. So Elijah was plugged to the power source. And the power of God took him from the back side to the front side and overtook the king who was suddenly on the donkey. Elijah overtook him. I pray for somebody. This year, 2024, you shall overtake. You shall overtake. But I'd like you to plug to the power source, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How to manifest the power of God. Now, there are some few things you have to understand to manifest the power of God. Like I said, number one, you must have his identity and his authority. So you see, now see that the word of God gives us identity and authority to manifest the power of God. Are we together? So the word of God gives us identity and authority. So the power of God can be manifested, I repeat, out of Christ. Cannot be manifested out of Christ. Cannot. Like we this this normal parable that says you become what you eat. You become what you eat. You become what you eat. So let's now inspect how can I manifest the power of God. If you eat junk food daily for the next one month, you will become like the junk food. You eat, you become what you eat. So Christ wants to be formed in you that you may manifest Christ. So when Christ is formed in you, you look like Christ and you manifest Christ's power. Like Paul was telling the Philippians chapter, in chapter number 4, verse 19, Paul said, my little children, until whom I travel for, until Christ is formed in you. So there is no manifestation of the power of God if Christ is not formed in you. There is no way. There is no way Christ must be in you. The authority of God, the identity of God, the seed of Abraham must be in you. Christ in you is the power of God. Now, quickly, before we go, first of all, how to manifest the power of God? You, number one, you must be dead to self. You must be dead to self. I go back to the example I gave initially. You see, the, it's... A plant, a tree, cannot grow on its own. But until when there is planting. So you must plant a seed into the ground. The seed absorbs water. We call it 
inhibition or imbibe. The seed imbibes water. That's in botany, plant biology. The seed imbibes water. Then it swells per time. The seed coat cannot keep it, the pressure inside mounds. Then the seed coat breaks out for the, shoot, for the roots to shoot out. So there was an inhibition, imbibing. The seed has to be planted first. It imbibes water, takes water inside. Now it swells up, means the pressure inside mounts, and now it breaks out at an appointed time. There is a time for that. By the aid of sunlight as well. Because heat is, heat is needed for the process of germination. So I'm teaching on the subject how to manifest the power of God. Number one, you must be dead to self. So the seed that is planted into the ground dies first of all. The seed must die for that germination. The seed must be planted. The seed must die. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, came, was born by a woman, came, took our sins and died on the cross, offered himself on the cross, died on the cross of Calvary. The spirit never died, but the body. The body carried the sins. His body carried, he carried our sins on his body. So the body was killed on the cross of Calvary for the power of God to be released. Are we together? So you must be dead to self to manifest the power of God. You must be dead to self. Shall we open to Luke chapter number 22, verse 42? If you look, examine that scripture, Luke 22, 42, and uh, Mark 4, 36, Jesus says, not my will, but let that will be done. You see, he was dead to self that his will has nothing to do. But rather, he was dead to self for the will of the Father to be done in his life. So one of the things, or one of the ways to manifest the power of God, you must be dead to self, and that is only in Christ. Self-denial. Dead to self talks about self-denial. You refuse, you give up your will, and pick up the will of God. And this is not possible if you are out of Christ. The Holy Spirit must help you to give up your will. Are we together? So, shall we open to Colossians 3? Please quickly. Colossians 3, verse 3 to 5. Colossians 3, verse 3 to 5. Colossians chapter number 3, verse 3 to 5. Alright, verse 3 says, For you died, and your life is now hidden in Christ, hidden with Christ in God. Please follow this again. I like this teaching. For you died, you the new creation. You that want to manifest the power of God, you must die first in Christ. You must be dead to self in Christ, self-denial in Christ. You, for you died, and your life is now, now, not the old man. The old man must die in Christ for the new man to become alive. The new identity, authority, identification of the new man. And your life is now, present, now. Hidden with Christ in God. With Christ in God. Scripture says we are heirs with God and co heirs with Christ. Heirs with God and co heirs with Christ. So we are hidden with Christ together with Christ in God. Now, verse 4 says, When Christ, who is your life, you see, so you must be dead to self. For the old man to die, you must give up the old man for the new man to make a life. He said, when, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you, also, then you also will appear with him in glory. Now we're together. Dead to self. So the first thing, one of the, fr uh, the first thing to, um, to help us, one of the pillars to help us manifest the power of God is dead to self. Dead to self. Secondly, total surrender. Total surrender. B talks about brokenness. Dead to self. The next phrase, total surrender. Brokenness in the hands of Jehovah. Shall we look at Jeremiah chapter number 18 verse 4 quickly? Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 4. 
Jeremiah 18 verse 4 says, Hallelujah. Jeremiah 18 verse 4. Jeremiah 18 verse 4. I read from the NIV again. It says, But the pot he was shaping from the clay was mud in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as simple as to him. Now, if you look at this uh, 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 scripture very well, Jeremiah uh, 18 speaks about the potter's house. He told Jeremiah, son of man, uh, uh, go down to the potter's house and there I will give you a message. And when Jeremiah got there and he was asking Jeremiah, watch, look at how the potter makes the clay into different shapes different forms according to their purposes. Son of man, can't I deal with Israel as this man, the porter, is doing to declare? Can I not? He said, but these people are stiff-necked. They are rebellious people. They are rebellious. I cannot mold them. I cannot shape them. I cannot form them. To conform to my image and likeness. They are rebellious. So in rebellion, you cannot be formed. Christ cannot be formed in you when you are a rebel. Christ cannot be formed in a, re in a rebel. When you, are, when you are rebellious, Christ cannot be formed in you. Therefore, you cannot manifest the power of God. You must be in, you must live in holiness. You must be obedient. So the second factor here is total surrender, brokenness. Let's go to James chapter number 4, verse 7. Let me show you something. James chapter number 4, verse 7. James 4, verse 7 says, I use the NIV again. James chapter number 4, verse 7. James 4, verse 7 says something important. James 4, verse 7. James chapter 4, verse 7. Mm hmm. It says something very important and interesting here. Verse 7 says, Submit yourself then to God and resist. Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So there's a place for submission. You see, a lot of us who want to bind the enemy, bind the works of darkness, bind the strong man. It's beautiful to bind and to lose. But you must first of all submit yourself to God. You must submit yourself totally to Christ in order to manifest his power. You must submit totally. So the second factor here is total surrender to Christ. Total surrender to Christ. Shall we go to Galatians? Please, Galatians 2.19. Let me show something. Galatians 2.19. Galatians 2.19. Galatians 2.19 says uh verse 19 says for though for though the law sorry for through the law sorry for through the law i died to the law so that i might live for god i have been crucified verse 20 i have been crucified with christ and i no longer live so the old man has nothing to, my old man is dead i no longer live i the old man no longer live but christ lives in me Christ must live in you to manifest the power of God. He said, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Can you see that? So I have been crucified with Christ. Ah, you, you must be crucified. You must surrender. Total brokenness. Total brokenness. In order for your will not to be done, you must... Surrender totally to Christ. Total surrender. Total brokenness. Hallelujah. So the first thing we saw here is you must be dead to self. Number two, you must surrender totally to Christ. And thirdly, number three, you must be obedient to Christ in order to manifest the power of God. Shall we open to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14? 1 Peter, let me show you something. Now, First Peter, First Peter, chapter one, verse fourteen. First Peter one fourteen. Okay, 
It says, NIV again says, As obedient children do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Verse 15, But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Verse 16, For it is written, Be holy because I, the Lord, I am holy. Again, let's go back to verse number 14. As obedient children. So if you are a new creation or you are born again, you must live in obedience to the one called Christ Jesus. If you are a believer, you should live in obedience to Jehovah. You must live in obedience to the Holy Spirit. You must live in obedience to the word of God. As obedient children, you can live in disobedience and manifest the power of God. It doesn't work. For the Bible says in 1 Samuel that disobedience is like the sin of witchcraft. Disobedience before God is as a sin of witchcraft. So if you, if you are disobedient to God as a man, you are looked upon as a wizard. If you are disobedient to Christ's word as a woman, you are looked upon as a witch. Hallelujah. As obedient. So you must be obedient to Christ to manifest his power. Hallelujah. So you must live in total obedience to the word of God. What the word says, do you do? What the word says, don't do, don't do. Obedient to the word of God is obedient to Christ himself. So this is one of the factors or pillars that help us to manifest the power of God. Obedience to Christ. Total obedience. Not partial obedience. Total obedience. Hallelujah. Number four, you must eat the word of God. The fourth pillar that helps us to manifest the power of God is you have to eat the word of God. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman who need not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of God. You must eat the word. You must study daily. You must meditate the word. Know that he told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He said, Joshua, let my word not depart. Let this book of the Lord not depart from the eyes and the mouth. He said, but meditate upon it day and night. Why? Success, to manifest success or to be successful you must meditate upon the word day and night. So the word now takes you to the place of success that you may observe all and to do all that. Observe, study, and to do application. Then there's manifestation of the word in obedience. Observation and doing is obedience. Hallelujah. Let's look at uh, Jeremiah 15 verse 16. Jeremiah chapter number 15. Jeremiah chapter number 15, verse 16. Jeremiah chapter number 15, verse 16. 15, 16. Alright, it says, we're looking at eating the word of God. To eat. Verse 16 says, when your words came to me, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart delight. For I bear your name, O Lord God Almighty. When your words came to me, I ate them. Eat the word, study the word of God. You can't live out of the word and manifest the power in the word or the power of the word. Christ is the power of the word. He is the word of God. You must be in the word to manifest the word of God. You must live by the word to manifest the word. So as Jeremiah says, I add the word. Study, the place of study. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter number 3, verse number 3. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 3, verse 3. Ezekiel 3, verse 3. Verse 3 says, Then he said to me, no, let me go to verse number, let's, let me take verse 1, 2, and 3 so we can better understand or comprehend the scripture. We can appreciate the scriptures. And he, verse 1, Ezekiel 3, verse 1. And he said to me, son of man, 
Eat what is before you. Eat this scroll, then go and speak to the house of Israel. Eat this scroll and go and speak. First of all, there's a place of eating the word before we speak prophecy, manifestation of the word. There's a place to eat the word in obedience, in holiness. You eat the word and you speak the word and things come to pass. The just shall live by faith. How? You first of all have to eat the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Then I go now and manifest. I put the faith into action to get the results, the manifestation. He says, eat what is before you. Eat the scroll. Eat the word. Then go and speak to the house of Israel. Verse 2. So I opened my mouth. Ezekiel speaking to us. I opened my mouth and he gave me the scroll to eat. I opened my mouth. So you have the responsibility to open your mouth and eat the word. You have the responsibility to meditate upon the word day and night. It's your responsibility. When, when he sees that desire, he, the, the, the Holy Spirit comes and teaches us, reveals to us the mystery of the kingdom. There must be desire. Now go to verse number 3. Say, then he said to me, son of man, eat the scroll I am giving you and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it and it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. Mm. The word of God is sweet when we eat it. It is sweet when you eat it. It makes you. Christ can be formed in you if you are not eating the word. He is the word that became flesh. John 1.14 he is the word that became flesh. So when you eat the word, the word is formed in you. When the word is formed in you, the life you have in you is the life of the word of God, which is Christ. Are we together? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shall we come to Psalms chapter number 119? Psalms 19. Psalms 119. Let's look at something again. Psalms 119. Psalms 119 verses 103. Psalms 119, Psalm 119, verses 103, okay, so 105, 103 to 105, okay, I'm there. Psalm 119, verses 103 says, how sweet are your words? to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Verse 4. Verse 104. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I ate every wrong part. Sorry, I hate every wrong part. So because he ate the word, he now hated. He could identify the wrongs from the rights. Because he ate the word of God, he now understood what is wrong, what is right. He said, and... He said, I, I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every wrong part. Look at because of the results. Of, look at the result. The result there of eating the word of God is what? Your word, the word became a lamp now to his feet. And a light to his path. Because he ate the word, he ate the word constant, consistently. He ate the word. The word now was in him. And the word began to manifest as a lamp unto his feet. For what? Direction. Most of us want to be directed by God, but there's no word of God in us. So the, the word now became a lamp, illumination, illumination, enlightenment. You can't possess what you don't see. You can't possess your possession until when you see them. You must see. And what do you need to see with your eyes? And you need light, illumination. So look at the results of eating the word of God. And there are so many. Hallelujah. So the word gives us understanding. To understand the times and season. To understand what the Father is saying to us. To understand uh, uh, um, how to move by faith. To understand the things of the kingdom is in the word. To understand how God functions is the word of God. Hallelujah. So, 
we've seen number one is you must be dead to self number two you must surrender totally number three you must be obedient to christ number four you must eat the word of god number five you must act in faith after you eat the word you have to say eat the word and go and speak eat the word believe and go and speak Eat the word and act in faith. For you to overtake, you must first of all eat the word and you move by faith. For you to be established this year, 2024, you must eat the word and operate by faith. For the just shall live by faith. So after eating the word, you must manifest by faith. The word carries power. The word is power and authority and identity. The word. So when I eat, I act. And, ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you something. Before you act the word of God by faith, there is a place called fellowship. One of the foundational pillars also is fellowship. Fellowship. Now, fellowship with the Holy Spirit brings intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 13 verse 14. 2 Corinthians. Uh, 2 Corinthians, yes. 2 Corinthians chapter number 13 verse 14. 2 Corinthians 13 14. It says, NIV again. NIV says, Verse 14 says, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So, in order to manifest the power of God, you must be in fellowship, constant fellowship with this power source called the Holy Spirit. So, the fellowship here is, you cannot please God without being in fellowship with Him. You cannot please God without faith. For he who must come to God must believe that God is. And how do you operate by faith? The word of God must be in you. And it's by the person of the Holy Spirit, not by your might, but by my spirit, say it, the Lord. So you must be in constant fellowship with the Holy Spirit to manifest the power of God, intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Now, you see, in Romans chapter number 8, verse 17, it says, We are heirs with God and co heirs with Christ. Which means that you must be in the family of God to manifest the power of God. Which means you must be in the family of God. When you're in the family of God, you have the identity. Therefore, you have the authority to manifest the power of God. So, in Galatians chapter number 2, shall we open Galatians 2, verse 2? I like the scripture. 2. Galatians 2. Verses number 20. Galatians 2, verse number 20. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith. I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So we now see here that it's intimacy, fellowship is important. In order to manifest the word, there must be an, a place for intimacy. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit releases the power of God as well. Help us to manifest the power of God. So in the place of fellowship, we become one with Christ. We become one with Him. The Bible says we are, co we are heads with God and co heads with Christ. means we are one with Christ. Therefore, the life I live is no longer my life. It's the life of Christ. Therefore, is the power of God made in action to me. I have the legal rights to manifest the power of God, not by mind, not by power, but because of the Christ Jesus who lives in me. He's the one that gives me the ability to manifest the power of God. So you must be in the family of God in holiness. And finally, you must pray. Fasting and prayers also help us to manifest the power of God. Fasting and prayer in holiness. Because many people pray and fast, but not in holiness. In James chapter number 5 verse 16, it said, The prayer of the righteous are very much. It was talking about the case of Elijah where he shut the heavens. For three and a half years, he said, 
There wouldn't be any rain. He shut the heaven and reopened the heaven. He said, at my word, the prayer of the righteous availed much. The prayer of the righteous. So a righteous man prays and has answers. The righteous man is the one that manifests the power of God. In sin, you cannot manifest the power of God. What am I trying to say? You must live, you must be prayerful, and you must always, please make it a duty to be fasting. Fasting is important because fasting kills the desires of the flesh. Our greatest enemy is not Satan. It's the flesh. So the more you fast, the more you kill the desire of the flesh. Therefore, the power is made, the power is released. But you must fast in holiness. You must, first of all, you must be a born again. You must be a new creation. And you must live in absolute obedience and in holiness. Coupled with prayer and fasting, power is released. Power is made manifest. Hallelujah. So, listen, gentlemen, I want us to go back to the place, to the power source, who is Christ. Let's go back to the power source, who is Christ Jesus. He wants you to be connected to him, that he may flow through you. He said, I am the vine, you are the branch. You are the branch, I am the vine. I want to flow through you. Only when I flow, only when the vine flows through the branch, the branch cannot bring forth fruit. Only when the vine flows through the branch, the branch cannot bring forth fruit of its kind. He wants you to manifest power out of the kingdom of God. He wants you to manifest the power of the kingdom of God. But how? He must flow through you. You must be connected to the power source called Christ, called the Holy Spirit, for him to flow through you. In physics, which I studied, it says, uh, electricity is simply the flow of uh, electrons. Electrons are what? Negative charges. When you plug it to the power source, current flows through the, that uh, cable. Once the, once the plug is plugged into the power source, and there's current present, current flows automatically. It's automatic, it flows. When you're plugged to the power source, which is Christ, power flows automatically. It's automatic. But you must live in holiness, obedience. For you to overtake this year, you must manifest in the power of God. Overtaking is in the power and by the power of God. Examine your life. Have you been living in obedience or disobedience to the word of God? Are you really in Christ? Or you're in a church. Examine your life. Relationship with Christ Jesus is what helps you to manifest His power. Hallelujah. How to manifest the power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching. Study the scriptures with us, along with us. Share our videos with your friends. Subscribe. Till then, Jesus Christ, remember, He loves you. Remember, Jesus Christ is coming back soon, sooner than we think. Make sure you're really in Christ. Make sure, examine your life if you're truly in Christ, if you're really a new creation, if you're living in holiness. Till then, God bless you. Shalom.